Now there's a little helper class that is very useful for both maps and sets for all the associative containers. And what it does is it's used to store pairs of data together. And uh, they're potentially heterogeneous because oftentimes the keys and values will be different types. And in the way that that uh, pair is used with set, as we'll see here shortly, once again, um, the way it's used is you'll have different types used for it. So you can see that a pair is a template that's defined with type name T and type name U. So it's struct pair. And it's gonna have two data members, first and second, and a bunch of constructors and default constructors and uh, various other kinds of constructors and so on. And what happens here is we typically use pair for a couple things, but the most common use is to bind a key, which is the first element, with the associated value, which is the second element. And what happens in STL is the value types for things like, like maps and multi-maps and so on, both ordered and unordered, use pairs under the hood. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example of using pair, just for kicks. This will give us a, a chance to talk about pair in its own right, because it's also a useful container without having to get wrapped up around its involvement with the associative containers. It's useful in its own right. So we're now in my, my uh, 5.2a subfolder under my 5.2 folder, which is part of the S-05 folder, which contains all the examples for the associative arrays and uh, associative containers and so on. So this example is just gonna use point in its own right, as opposed to getting in more involved fashion with the associative containers. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna define ourselves a point class. So here's point, and point is a very simple template that takes a type name T and a type name U, and it has a constructor, and it has an X and Y pair of data members, which are references. So X is a reference and Y is a reference. Now, the second you see data members in a class that are references, a light bulb should go off on top of your head saying, hey, this probably means that we've got to use the base member initialization section, because it turns out that that's one of the things you must use the base member initialization section for, is initializing the references. Uh, and then if you take a look down here, you'll see that we implement our point as a pair which is parameterized by T1 and T2, which are the parameterized types. So that's what this is gonna look like. And then over here, just for kicks, we're going to, uh, to use our move copy constructor semantics again, just to demonstrate the pros and cons of move semantics. And this particular constructor is gonna take an X and Y, which are the points, and it's gonna go ahead and stash them into the pair, which is a private data member, so X will become the first element in the pair, Y will become the second element in the pair. And we're gonna use this little macro that'll either turn into nothing or turn into STD colon colon move. And then we're gonna go ahead and initialize our references X and Y with pair underscore dot first and pair underscore dot second. And that way we can initialize the references in the base mesh member initialization section after first initializing the pair that's going to hold them. And I'm just doing this to have some fun. I might or might not actually implement anything like this in practice, but I think we'll all agree that a point class typically has an X and a Y uh, pair of fields or data members. So this is how we're gonna implement that. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at the main program. And the main program here is going to start out being very simple. It's gonna make a point with X being 100 and Y being 200. So it'll be a pair of ints to start out with. And then we go ahead and we print out X and we print out Y. Well, that's pretty simple. I think you'll, you can probably already uh, de devise or derive what you think X and Y will be, because it's pretty obvious there. So let's show a couple bit more interesting examples. Here we're gonna have a string to string mapping where we're gonna say book chapter one is chapter one and the title of that will be meet the C++ STL. So down here, we're gonna print out book chapter X and book chapter Y, and of course, it'll print out chapter one, meet the STL. So that's another example. Then down here, just to kind of mix things up even further, we're gonna make it be a pair of string to void pointer mapping. So maybe you'd use this in a, in a debugger, perhaps. 
to map symbolic names to their addresses in the code. So in this case, we're going to have the, the X parameter be my num, which is just a string, and the void star is going to be some value that we are going to cast to a void star. So in order to do this properly in later versions of C++, you have to do what's called a reinterpret cast. And it basically says, compiler, I know that um, 0x410928a8 really isn't a pointer, but would you please reinterpret it as a pointer for the purposes of this, this example? And they'll say, okay, I'll double check to make sure that's all right. And in this case, it will be fine. So let me go ahead and print those values out. And then the final thing we're going to do down here, just for kicks, is we're going to demonstrate the move optimization. So in this case, we're going to, again, create a point of simple string to simple string mapping, whereas up here we did a mapping of string to string. So now we're going to do simple string to simple string. And we're going to make a simple string called chapter two, and then we're going to, that's going to be X, and then we're going to make another simple string, which is going to be Y, and that'll have the value meet the C++ STL associative containers, which is probably not the most uh, inspiring chapter name, but what the heck. And then we go ahead and print those out as uh, const care stars. So let's go ahead and run this program. And uh, I forget what I set the default to with my move macro, but we can go over here to settings and figure that out. So if we go over here to settings and we take a look at this guy and we look at CMake, you can see that to start out with, I don't have this set to anything. So I want to show you what happens with, um, with the implementation. So you can see that the output here is going to be uh, my point X, my point Y, which is 100 and 200, which I think you'll agree that's pretty obvious. Then for the book chapter one, we get chapter one, meet the C++ STL, those are strings. Then down here, we're going to do my num with the reinterpret cast, and that's going to end up getting those results, which they should. And then you can see down here where we're going to use the, the move implementation that's defined to be nothing. So it's just going to use good old C++ value semantics, where we create a simple string from a const care star, and then we end up using the copy constructor to make a copy of that in the point implementation. So this is going to be the version that uses the copy constructor. And you can see it's going to make a full-blown copy. And in this particular case, that's overkill for our purposes. And so we're going to see if we can make this thing recompile where we define this macro to be different. Let's say move is going to be standard move. Let's go ahead and try to recompile that guy. And it's chugging away. And now we get what we want. So let's go back over here and take a look at the code. Here's the code that's going to be different. Uh, all the other outputs going to be the same as we did before. But now when we come down here, you'll notice what happens is because we're using the move operation, that's going to trigger the move constructor as opposed to the copy constructor. And if you recall, all the move constructor does, as always, is it takes the state of the object it's passed, which in this case will be the simple string that's created with this constructor, with a const care star constructor. And it just takes its internal data fields, its data members, like the underlying stir pointer and the LAN and so on, and it just steals it and transfers the ownership from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So all the calls you see here, actually, except for the ones that are the constructors that convert a const care star into a simple string, all those other calls are just copying pointers or, or ints around, and they're not actually making deep copies of anything. So they're going to be really fast. And even the simple string destructor here that says null pointer, that's actually not deleting anything. Um, that's just going ahead and doing nothing. Uh, we will, of course, have to delete something because there were simple strings allocated originally, so we have to make sure we clean them up. But you'll notice that there's only two calls that actually allocate any memory, these two calls, and there are only two destructors that destroy or free up any memory, and those are those destructors. And everything else is using the move optimization. So once again, just demonstrating the, the beauty and power of move, and uh, you'll need to use the move optimization, of course, for your upcoming assignments, assignment three and, and beyond, will always use the move semantics as well as the copy constructor semantics as well. And so uh, the thing to remember is that 
the move constructor and the move assignment operator are part of the rule of five for newer C++ classes and containers and so on. Okay, so that was the discussion about pair. So at this point, you've got a chance to see what pair does. And now we're gonna move on and talk about other perhaps more interesting applications of pair in the context of associative containers.